It's the 16th of May 2019. Good morning and welcome to News Here on New Day. My name is Josh Quinnin and coming up this morning. Details of these are many more coming up in the next 30 minutes. My name is Josh Quinn. We are live on DSTV channel 279. On to our very first story. More than 20 persons have been arrested after a protest to draw government attention to the abandoned new Doma Kotokrum dual carriage road project in Sunyai turned chaotic. Our Bono regional correspondent, Larry Park Moses, reports a police officer was nearly lynched by the Irish demonstrators. The agitation, according to the protesters, was as a result of the spate of motor accidents on the abandoned dual carriage project, claiming that 32 lives had been lost on that stretch. They blocked the road and burnt car tires overnight. It got more intense when one of the protesters was arrested. The irate crowd then began pelting the police with stones from all directions, accosting one of them and damaging two police vehicles. The arrival of a police reinforcement team led to the arrest of some of the demonstrators. Now, I had to remove the, the, the lorry ties and the wood that is blockade the police car. So as at the time the car took off, I was the only one left on the ground. There were people that had surrounded me with stones, catalyses and all other weapons. But thank God the peace I was keeping saved me. One of the demonstrators, Hassan Mubarak, said the dual carriage road has been abandoned, resulting in numerous accidents. For close to 12 years, the project has stalled. Many lives have been lost on this stretch, including four police officers. DSP Franklin Kramo said those arrested would be processed for court. And yesterday was exactly 40 years ago, former President Flight and Lieutenant Jerry John Rawlings staged his first military coup. It was just five weeks before a scheduled general election to return the country to civilian rule. Here is a throwback on aspects of Ghana's military rule history. <laughs> Ghana's third military coup was planned by a small group of disgruntled military officers. On May 15, 1979, less than five weeks before the national elections, Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rawlins and several members of the Air Force tried to overthrow the General Kofu led Supreme Military Council. But there was a historical sequence in which Rollins found his way onto Ghana's political landscape. General I.K. Champon had overthrown the Buzia regime on January 13, 1972. General Champon's coup ushered in the National Redemption Council on January 13, 1972. General Champon sought to promote a union government under which he would be the presiding head to continue his regime. There is a widely held view that he lost his focus and thereby eroded the many successes he chalked early on in his regime. Some of his men weren't in favor of the union government agenda and thereby rebelled. He was eventually overthrown in a palace coup on July 5, 1972. The palace coup was led by General Frederick Akufu, who was in power from July 5, 1978 to June 4, 1979. This new regime went ahead to introduce multi-party democracy and the arrangement of parliamentary and presidential elections to be held on June 18, 1979. 
It was in the midst of organizing the elections that Rollins and his group felt the need to change the focus of the nation. I keep describing it as turning on the gas in a kitchen. That's how volatile it was. From a distance, all you needed to do was to ignite a match and throw it inside. Rollins felt that the country had been plunged into chaos and that the elite military officers were to be held accountable. Jerry John Rollins and his men were arrested and held in military custody pending a date to be interrogated under a court martial. Rollins and his group of six airmen appeared before a general court martial presided over by Colonel Eninfo, who decided to make it an open and public trial to be covered by the press. Rollins took responsibility for the coup and indicated that there was corruption and moral decadence within the country's fabric, which required a thorough cleansing to root out the canker. His pronouncements were instantly hailed and many aligned with his bold and brave posture. Selling of his pictures became hot business and he was hailed as a savior and thus named Junior Jesus. On the night of June 3, 1979, a group of junior officers staged a coup and freed Rollins, then formed the Armed Forces Revolutionary Council, AFRC, to rule the country. An interesting revelation there by my colleague Alfred Nyama. And now the National Communications Authority, NCA, has shut down Sunyani based pro government radio station Space FM in compliance with the ruling of the Electronic Communication Tribunal. It follows similar you know, shutdown of Accra based Radio Gold and Radio SYZ. And uh, the NCA has explained that the shutdown is as a result of the FM spectrum audit in 2017, where by some stations were found to be in default and were fined by the authority. However, some of the stations in default not satisfied with the action proceeded to the various courts, Electronic Communications Tribunal and the High Court to appeal against the NCA's decision. This resulted in a decision by the ECT in 2018 which reviewed the status of expired FM radio broadcasting authorizations which ruled among others that the companies whose authorization had expired freshly apply for them. And until the passage of the legislative instrument which will support the enforcement of the Mental Health Act, the Mental Health Authority will continue to, you know, reel other financial challenges. In an interview with TV3, CEO of the Mental Health Authority, Dr. Kwesiose says the airline is currently with the Attorney General, Wendy Laie Hasmo. CEO of the Mental Health Authority, Dr. Kwesiose, noted the ally is yet to be laid in Parliament. I just received a letter from the Attorney General that um, if, they are if we are happy with the form in which it is now, then we give them the go-ahead, then they will send to Parliament. So unlike what I thought was gone, it's not exactly yet gone, but at least it means that it's on its way. Without its passage, the authority's financial challenges would soar. And we are hoping that if it goes to Parliament by June and then when they will be rising after the second sitting or the second session, then it would have been passed. Once that one is done, the next thing will be for the Minister responsible for finance to establish the levy for us. Until the levy is established, every time that we get money is just a token. Meanwhile, Dr. Akwesiose is calling on corporate Ghana to support the payment of the toll-free line for the Mental Health Authority to help save lives. NC has given us that line, but it needs to be activated, and that means that we need to be able to pay for the cost of the free calls that come from um, patients. The telecos are not picking it. I'm hoping that maybe the co some corporate body organization, private organization, may come and say that we are going to support you for one year, 9,000 a month, for one year, 108,000 cities, you'll be happy. Still on mental health, 98.5% of government funding to mental health is spent on staff emolument. This was revealed in a report on tracking resources for community-based mental health services by Basic Needs Ghana, an NGO. 
The year-long research on tracking resources for community-based mental health services by Basic Needs Ghana was conducted from January to December last year. As part of the research, Basic Needs developed a checklist with health stakeholders with support from Star Ghana in 30 districts of five regions in the country. Key findings in the report indicates 97% of funding gap for community-based mental health service. Capacity building stood at 78% and logistics at 96%. We also found out that uh, the local assemblies are not doing uh, what is needed in order to provide the, these resources for their people or for the mental health uh, service providers to properly uh, implement services within specific districts. We must understand that that's why traffic keeps building up in the three psychiatric hospitals. Internally generated funds, IGF, was the main mode of financing non-renumerative expenditure. The purpose of the resource tracking exercise was to understand resourcing of community-based mental health care in Ghana. CEO of the Mental Health Authority, Dr. Akwesiose, bemoaned the delay in the release of budgetary allocations to the authority and the three psychiatric hospitals. We have had only releases for the first quarter. If you look at the three psychiatric hospitals, each one of them should get about six million. The government says, no, we can't give you six million, but you can give you 1.2 million, that per hospital. Now the 1.2 million will be coming in three, four quarters, so every quarter will be 300,000. So it's a 300,000 that has been given to the three psychiatric hospitals each. The authority itself has had um, 60,000, which is our allocation, quarterly allocation for the year. The executive director of Basic Needs Ghana, Peter Ayaro, noted mental health remains underserved, adding access to quality community-based mental health, especially in relation to children and women, must be prioritized. The program director and acting CEO of Star Ghana Foundation, Amidu Tanko, expressed disappointment over lack of interest in mental health issues, which has contributed to its funding challenges. And if you're just tuning in, you're watching news here on New Day with me, Josh Quinn. We are live on DSTV, Channel 279. Still on health, patients who require services at the Central Medical Laboratory at the Kolebu Tishin Hospital and their relatives were turned away following a sit-down strike by the Allied Health Professionals. It's been to report some members, however, were on standby to attend to emergency cases. The situation at the Central Laboratory when the news team got there Wednesday morning. Many people were not aware of the strike and had to be briefed on the situation. The filmatology unit of the central lab was empty. Staff were in red bands and had left their working areas. Some frustrated relatives did not know what to do about the situation. My daughter-in-law uh, 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 is in a critical condition in the maternity uh, ward. She couldn't deliver, she was, she was operated, and now I'm here for her lab. This is the blood. I'm holding blood here. And they said they, they, uh, they are on strike. And so sh should I send the blood home? How long have you been here? A about uh, uh, three or four hours now. I'm frustrated. I don't know what to do. I was asked to come and take some uh, bottles for some blood samples for some blood analysis of my mom. But I came and uh, went to the cashier to pay and she said the people are on strike so they cannot take the money. If they take the money, uh, there will be tension there so they are waiting for them to resume before they can take any money. Chairman of the Kolibu Teaching Hospital Chapter of the Federation, Thomas Tanko said some exceptional cases were being attended to. Today we have started in full force and um, because our, the way we work here uh, is not uh, as with the other uh, the same. So those that we are in contract with that have already paid, we, are, we receive their sample because they, are, they came here and they can, cannot attend them. So we have received, received those samples. But as fresh cases, we are not working on them. And that is the status we have now. The strike, he said, would continue until their demands were made. From what we know from the ministry's organogram, with, which has the Allied Health, uh, section on it. We expected that 
when they are reconstituting the uh, uh, um, hospital, uh, teaching hospital board, the allied health grouping, which consists of 18 different professions, should have been included on it, but we were sidelined. The allied health professional council, council board, which has not been in existence for the past two and a half years, and we think that's not very good uh, for the country because new schools are being, uh, 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 allied health schools are being uh, opened and we don't know who is regulating what they are doing. And the radiology department staff were attending to emergency cases even though they had served notice of the strike. Members are the National Radiotherapy Oncology and Nuclear Center, we were told, were also working. Members said, among other things, nothing had been done on the non-inclusion of allied health professionals in the proposed amendments to the governing board of the Ghana Health Service and Teaching Hospital Act 1916 at 525. And some residents of Nima and Mamo Bin Accra want government to embark on an aggressive behavioral change campaign on waste management in the two communities. This follows the Works and Housing Ministry's announcement of a major facelift to slums, which forms part of President's vision of inner city and Zongo development. Here's a report by my colleague Selom Aminya. The Works and Housing Minister Samuel Atachia reiterated what the President had already said in his State of the Nation address that they are seeking to transform uh, Nima and Mahamubi and other slums under the slum uh, redevelopment program. And this has created or generated a lot of uh, discussion across uh, the media as well as the country. We are here to speak to the presiding member of the Iowa North uh, Municipal Assembly. How do you see this uh, vision by the president? Yes, yeah, very loud. About. It's something that we've been waiting for so long. Because when you look at the community, the way it has been designed, it has been very difficult for the municipal to implement certain projects. As you can see, uh, we are having this one being one household. You see? We don't even have layout. We don't have social centers. You see? We don't have toilet facilities. Yeah, yeah, what area, Hano? I was saying, yes, sir, yes, my uncle. Son said, if he, if he, yeah, yeah, or be CSC, you know, or be so sad, no. All of us residents must change our attitudes towards sanitation. If not, it will be a Herculean tax for government. Some will build a house and there is a big air condition, like the house is coming down. And there is no space. Something may happen right now. We all, we are going to be destroyed because there is no space for somebody like ambulance or... Uh, fire service cannot come around. So we are happy for what the president is about to do. We free has a quite polyclinic. I just want to do polyclinic and send one to Lolo Kwan. A bomb of you could see. We have a just a word to Kaukudi and send one to Lolo Kwan. Try walking to the polyclinic. The buildings are clustered without access roads and this generates a lot of heat in the area. The least said about sanitation culture, the better. A landlord, Yusuf Mohammed, is worried the project will take away his source of income as residents, including himself, will be given apartment for free. If you know your family house, but tenants won't. Most of our houses are owned by families, with some rented out to tenants. This is where we also generate our income. But if the project will take away our incomes, then government must reconsider. Meanwhile, the NDC MP for IOS North, Yusuf Isakajaja, has raised concerns over what he describes as government failure to provide him and all other relevant stakeholders with the necessary information about the project. But presiding member of the IOS North Municipal Assembly, Derek Asagbo, insists the NP has no case as the proposal is yet to be put before cabinet. And I can't remember the last time he even came to our general assembly. Yeah, since the assembly has come to be, uh, I think he only came one time and he sat about 15 minutes and he left. So I don't think he's much aware of what is even happening within the assembly. 
and stakeholders have welcomed this very directive by government. Well, let's see how that pans out with regards to its implementation. And now the Ghana Statistical Service requires $83 million to conduct the 2020 National Census. Deputy Government Statistician David Combat made this known in Accra during the release of the April 2019 Consumer Price Index. The Ghana Statistical Service will begin a multi-stage trial census from May 26th with June 2 as the census night. This forms part of preparations for the 2020 population and housing census. Deputy Government Statistician David Combat said the service will require $83 million for the project. Government is usually the main financier of a population census, it's supported by development partners and the private sector. The cabinet has given approval for us to conduct the census. They have given us some money to start with the preparatory activities. But well, the census is over a period, five year period. So we expect that as and when we require, uh, we will always get, we'll get the money. We will need close to $83 million. Yes, you can multiply by 83. You can multiply it by the current rate and see the CD equivalent. And for all, for all the activities of the census. The Ghana Statistical Service is setting up numeration centers for the census. To, to start with the processes which we have indeed started, we have almost uh, covered the whole um, half of the country with the updating of the enumeration areas which we are going to use for the census. We have also prepared the the equip the instruments, the questionnaires, the manuals, and we are testing them uh, on the field. We are also doing a pilot, and this time we want to do it in stages. David Combat indicated the 2020 population and housing census will be paperless. Automated. We are acquiring, going to acquire tablets, electronic devices, tablets to collect the data. We have already started experimenting. We we, the surveys that we currently do, we use tablets to take the, the, the and even the trial sensors, we are using uh, tablets. We are going to use tablets to collect the information so that it, it, we can release the, the results um, as quickly as we want. And, and also, uh, it helps us with some built-in checks that will help the field workers. You don't need to go through paper to edit. And on to the foreign front, U.S. President Donald Trump will today, May 16, 2019, outline a plan to harden border security and overhaul the legal immigration system to favor applicants who speak English, are well-educated, and have job offers. Senior administration officials said Trump's immigration proposal, the product largely of senior uh, advisors Jared Kushner and Stephen uh, Miller, and economic aide Kevin Hassett, is an effort to rally Republicans on an issue that has often divided them. And that's how we end news here on New Day. You can get more news updates on our website, streenews.com. And New Day continues to rise after this break. My name is George Quinn. I'm black and proud. It's one more. Book back. The first day is here, mm -hmm. and uh, it seems the week is going slowly. Oh, it's too slow for me. <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't know if it's the rains that's causing that, you know, feeling, it's but it's, it's pretty slow for me. I, I wish today was Saturday already. Yeah, yeah it's slow. I, I, I think that this part of a crowd. You crime, guys have weekend plans. Oh yeah, me I yes, have weekend plans. You know, you know my. Well, I go to work, but after that to rest, rest. and then you not rest. No, 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 no. No, no. Look, it's a packed weekend. But starting from uh, today. Do which hunters rest? <laughs> Johnny knows we are naming Christy this weekend. Yeah. So, so it's a, it, it, it's a it's packed a weekend. Plenty of pressure. A lot of excitement. There is the, uh, the Kloju Festival in uh, Pram Pram. And so it's, mm. a, it's a packed one. It's right. really packed one. Yeah. <laughs> Senior bride. Oh, yeah. It's a packed one. <laughs> But you, the, just, this, right. you know, you, you know what? Where I live in Accra, mm. the Gamashi area is thrown out because of the ban on mm. the exactly. So you are migrating. So I migrate <laughs> over the weekend into another territory. I see. Yeah. So that you can go and yeah. experience there. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't like the ban? No. Oh, Johnny, I like it. Accra, you know, I look, Johnny. Let, let's let, let's say it. Driving around Accra these these days at night yeah. during the day, Accra is calm. Yeah, very peaceful. Very mm -hmm. peaceful. Mm -hmm. 
the places that you sit and there's so much noise, it's now uh, calm and mm. you enjoy yeah. the environment. You can actually have a conversation. Yeah, you, have, you can have. And so, hear yourself. Yeah, and hear yourself. <laughs> yes. So it's you know. cool, except that, you know, what happens, th th that kind of excitement where you find people all over at certain places, you, you don't find it. But it's good. Mm. But, but I think that the, the EPA should take a cue. I mean, if the traditional yeah. authority is able Can do to it. enforce mm. a ban and to enforce the right decibels of noise, mm. the EPA should be able to do it. Yeah. I mean, it should not be tough for them. If they have a challenge doing it, they could just consult yeah. them and say, yeah. how do you do it? Mm. Because as Santiman does it, yeah. nearly every every tribe in this country has mm. a period where they go silent. So how can the state know? can't do How same? can the state do that? It's more powerful than exactly. the traditional. Yeah. They cannot do I would that. want to believe that the state has reneged on its, you know, um, abilities to be able to punish people for so long. But when it comes to the traditional societies, people tend to still have that cultural belief of the gods will punish you if yeah. you go against it. And so people would actually, you know, adhere to these rules when the bans are placed. And I think, like you said, they just mm. need to take a cue because mm. really, if you punish me for it and it serves as a deterrent, certainly other people would stop. Right. So I don't think it's an excuse. It's, it's good enough because if the traditional council, I don't think they go around parading with no. any agency or force to ens you know, ensure that this is you know, um, adhered to by yeah. the strictest measure. But they're doing it successfully. Mm. So definitely it just means that some agency is relaxing yeah. mm. and you know, yeah. having a there's few days. They just need to. Exactly. I, I, so Sometimes you don't even hear about it, but once you get into the terrain mm. and you realize there's a calm, you just yeah. fall in line. Mm. You don't need to be a part of well, them to be able well, to, you know. on Tuesday, I saw a guy who was driving through uh, the North Kaddish area. Mm. He had his speakers blasting yeah. music. And then, as soon as he got into the enclave, he realized that nah. everywhere is Levels silent. changed. So he, <laughs> he, he started muted, yeah. reducing, reducing the it. volume and exactly. he brought it down to a very good Exactly. So, we sh we sh I, I think that the, the EPA could do better. Mm -hmm could do better. Good morning to you, EPA. Uh, mm. uh, we love you, but we want to see you working. Earn your salaries. That's what I always say. Mm. Earn your salary. Uh, Accra is likely to erupt into some uh, celebrations because I can see some three key activities mm. ending around the same period. Mm. Okay, through In about a month, uh, the, the fishermen will go back to fishing. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the Muslims will finish their fast. fast, fast. Uh -huh. mm. uh, the ban on noise will be lifted. Mm. And I can imagine the celebration. that kind of celebration. The euphoria yeah. that will yeah. come yeah. along with it. I mean, it's, it's about managing yeah. it mm. because yeah. while you're having fun, somebody is mm. sleeping. Yeah. Mm. And these days, they, um, with the advent of the proliferation of a lot of uh, pubs mm. and clubs and drinking spots, People are neighbors to these, yeah. you know, places. And so while you're sleeping, you've, imagine you've gone for a night duty, you've come back, you want to take a little rest, and somebody's blasting the speakers, and people are dancing and mm. smoking their lives away and drinking nice. everything possible. You would clearly not be. So mm -hmm. while we enjoy, while we have fun, while we try to make business and make profit, we must also think about people and that's where the EPA comes <coughs> in. We should okay. do it in the remits of the law. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. EPA, you for look sharp. Yeah. So, look sharp. so Charlie, the church is how? Oh, huh. uh, I mean, the churches are still carrying about their normal activities and the whole scare of the terrorism for me, I think it, it's a bit of a hoax because I think it's something we have to talk about every day in mm. terms of security for the nation. And we've always spoken about it. Where in Ghana, I don't think majority of us are security conscious. And so for me, if this information is coming to make us more, you know, cautious alert. of alert of the things around <laughs> us, that's fair enough. But it's not as if. I mean, for me, even if terrorists do, do, you do not think they will come land, no, I'm saying even if they are coming, mm -hmm. right, is what we're going to do change anything? Are we changing <laughs> our strategies to make sure that we can clamp down mm -hmm. on them? That for me is the big I, thing. I, if not, mm -hmm. then I, I think it's just another opportunity for us to increase mm -hmm. awareness mm -hmm. of how to, you know, care for yourself and look around and take certain, you know, mm -hmm. cautious. Like, otherwise, mm -hmm. there's nothing I, I, new to I it. remember back in the day when the Al Shabaab thing came mm -hmm. up, when we lost uh, the late uh, Professor Wono, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and, you know, it, it came to Burkina Faso. So that was yeah. how close it got it to was. us. We had the police put up their. Um, uh, what do you go? Their tanks, mm -hmm. advantage points. Right. They were at the malls and densely populated areas to, mm. you know, ensure that they at least scare people and, and enforce security and all mm. of that. Then suddenly they went away. I've seen them coming back again. Mm. So it tells, like you're saying, our attitude towards 
we see a problem, we fix it, Very we reactive. go back to sleep. Exactly. Pretty much the same way the EC will come three weeks to an election, mm -hmm. uh, do plenty public education and some adverts, right after the election they go to sleep. Mm -hmm. So it's a national problem that we it need is. to start looking at, that we have a long-term thing. Now, the difficult part is where the church says, we are open to everybody. Mm -hmm. All sinners are welcome mm -hmm. to be redeemed and to be uh, helped to repent to gain salvation. Right. And so, <laughs> how, how do you, you police screen? it? Mm -hmm. How do you, for example, stop somebody who is carrying a backpack into and, a and church search, mm -hmm. and, and search, search the person? That will be humiliation. The person, once he walks up, may not come back again. So, and it, now it, where church is a money-making, you know, venture. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. So. Absolutely. See, it's, sometimes it's really these um, happenings, mm. it, it is the, the stampede that follows that is the problem. Um, uh, the occurrence mm. that that causes the a, a the lot of mayhem. Yeah. So uh, there is a, a grenade that is thrown at a point or mm. a bomb blast, and everyone is trying to get out. Right. And you know these are churches. I mean, look at the, 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 doors, the doors through which mm. they go. Slender I mean, doors. Mm. Fifty people are attempting to go through the same place mm. at the same time. Okay. So you have more people. Uh, choking there mm. than even those that the, 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 the grenade will or the bomb will uh, exactly. <laughs> kill. So yeah. uh, uh, I, I hear they are meeting national security. Perhaps maybe they, they can't take a look at whether they should make their doors. Uh, Architectural structure. Yeah, you remember the May night incident, not, mm. not to remind anybody mm. of, of mm. their loss, but the May night in, in, incident itself was, was an example of what you're talking about, right. where People rushed not because they were the, hit by the, the tear gas, gas had but because they were all trying to get out at the same time. Mm. So it's an architectural defect that we need to fix right. as a nation. I don't know how, how quickly the churches well. can do that in response to what we uh, the threat, uh, the, the threat. But mm. we're, we're so hoping that at least uh, they will be able to get. Uh, God is alive, so. is he not? Yes. But anyway, today on the show we have interesting uh -huh. things lined uh -huh. up for you. Uh -huh. We're talking about technology and education because that's how far we've come. We want to find out what exactly are we doing the field to make sure education is better for many young people out there. Then, of course, TV3 is also coming back with a lot of shows uh -huh. that went off screen. We'll be oh, talking about yeah. that and reminding you so that mm. you stay glued to this station because we offer you nothing but the best. You, and so there's more you on the show. Fit. Make sure you stay tuned with mm. us. Don't change the dial. We're on till 9 a.m. Make mm. sure you stick and stay with us. We'll take a break. We'll be back right after that. Happy birthday from all of us here to Selom Amenya here with us at the TV3 newsroom. May God richly bless you on this beautiful day of yours. But we're going to be discussing technology in education. And as we've always said, there are small things we can do to make sure everyone has a better life. But oftentimes we're looking at the big things. But now we're talking about technology in education in the smallest ways to reach the communities. And Theovision is the one doing this. Joining me in studio to discuss this is Reverend Theodore Men. Asari. He is the president and founder of Theovision International. I've also got Pastor Eric Wusa. He's a group leader for the field ministries. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. So let's get to understand what you do and your scope of work. Because when we talk about technology, oftentimes we're looking at computers, the big gadgets. But tell me how you reach the communities through some technological means. Our main target hmm. area is those who cannot read. Okay. How can we reach them right. with all these wonderful contents that readers mm. have access to? Okay. And so we started with audio mm. Bible. We saw that people cannot read the Bible to themselves. Okay. And so then we started with audio Bibles mm. in different languages. Right. So Asante, Ghana, and so in Ghana here, out of the 60 languages that we speak, we have been able to do the audio Bible in 43 languages wow. already. Wow. And we don't only work here, we also work across Africa. Okay. So in total, we have done 400 African languages, bringing them to audio Bibles, audio Bibles wow. in 400 African languages. 
So the, the question is, apart from the Bibles, I understand you also you put on syllabus as well on your solar pan, you know, powered um, devices. Yes. I want you to show viewers what we're talking about so that they can also come on board. Because when I talk, when I see this, this is a small gadget, but you're using it to do so many things, right. and you know that's very commendable. But I want to find out how are you able to track the progress of people you give these devices to to make sure that they are using it the way it's supposed to be used and they're benefiting from from it in the audio bible uh, area mm. we have people trained okay. out there right okay. now we are doing the bible listening programs wow. in 3000 villages in ghana right now 3000 yes wow. and uh, we have people scattered all over the place okay. north south east and okay. they meet every evening mm. to listen to the bible in their own mother tongue we mm. have a device for group listening okay. and we have device for individuals hmm. and then after the audio bibles we now that this is where the technology and yeah. training comes in hmm. we are now running bible school for non-readers okay those who cannot read those who cannot write hmm. and so we have all the contents the courses okay. translated into the language of the people hmm. yeah and then we have put them in devices like this. This is a solar device. Right. You don't need power to run it. Okay. And you can listen to all the calls. Mm. And together with this device and their mobile phones, okay. we can interact with them. Right. You know, we can interact with them mm. and they can run through the course. We have mm. a one year course for beginners and two year course for advanced. Right. And uh, it's through mobile phones and this device. this device. Let me come to you, Pastor Wusa, because you're a group leader for the field ministry, so I'm sure you interact with the people as well. I want to find out, in using this device, what have been some of the challenges, and do you think people appreciate what Theovision is doing for them? Yes, um, I have been on the field, mm. and I'm still on the field, <laughs> yes. People actually appreciate what mm. Theovision is doing for okay. them, because you go to some of these remote villages, mm and they don't have anything technological. Wow. Probably the only thing they can be proud of is their phones, mm. which sometimes they will stand on the hill somewhere just for reception, right. or they will climb a tree and stretch their phones so they can get reception. Right. But with this, um, in almost every village in Ghana, uh, they have a day they don't go to the farm, right. and then they rest. Mm. So in such cases, they actually sit around okay. and they listen to the device okay. and then they do discussion. Mm. And when you go back, the joy mm. of they listening to God's word is, is, is amazing. Right. They share with you how their lives have been oh, transformed. Transform. They share with you what they have been hearing, okay. but now they're hearing it directly to mm. themselves. And the joy also is that it's not in any other language, mm. but in their own mother tongue. Right. So there are words they even don't know and the device brings out the word so clear to them. Mm. We have had instances where they have the Bible put down, the written Bible, and then they have the audio. And as they hearing the audio, they are comparing it to the right. And some people have even learned how to read their local Bible mm. through the audio. Nice. So they are so much happy. Mm. And this is what touches us to even spread it the more. Right. So we are hoping that at 3,000 villages, we will spread it the more. And by the end of the year, we'll have more villages come to the grid. Great. I'm happy to hear that a solar you know, powered. And right. so clearly, yes, exactly. even in the remotest areas, mm -hmm. there's always the sun. Right. But also, I wanted to find out how do you, I mean, how is it one person gets one device and how do they maintain it? Yeah. Uh, this device, mm. unless maybe um, you throw it into fire or okay. water, you want to de destroy, it. destroy it. But it can work two years without any maintenance okay. as well, at all. Uses uh, the solar, like okay. you said. Mm. And so when they have this, each one will have one. Okay. 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 And they listen to the Bible. In fact, there is a group. Uh, device. Mm. These 3,000 uh, oh. places we have, we have this device, okay. and this device is very loud. Uh, about, uh, let's say, 
So clearly that's in Johanny Asempa Timienu. So you can so they all listen to this when they come in the group in form. The group, okay. In the group form. Okay. But the, the school we mm. are running, mm. we use this one okay. and that one, one person to this. Pay one. And together with their phones. Okay. Okay. The phones is very, very important mm. because the the syrup or the content it's on this device. Right. But every ten days you do a quiz through your phone. Okay. Okay. And then it will tell us how you are doing. Okay. We don't have to be with you. And the course is not uh, bringing people together. Okay. You're on your own. Right. You know, you right. can do it in so the farm. you are. You can do it at right. home. You know, you can just run from your market business <laughs> and then <laughs> do it. You right. know, and it's a one year course okay. using technology because the, the, their phones, mm. we are able to communicate with them. Right from our office to, track to their see progress. how they are doing. Yeah. Very well. So let me find out for people who are interested in reaching out, in using these things, because I'm sure if I, my grandmother chances upon, you know, this right. interview today, right. she want to know, is it free? Those, yeah, I would say yes and no. No, okay. If you want some, you can buy. Okay. I mean, if you want some, you can okay. buy. But those we are working with, right. the listening groups and all that. Those people get yes. it for free. Free. Yeah. But anyway, let's go on and talk about the, you know, the successes you've chugged because you've grown. Yeah. You, I mean, you started somewhere now, you're at, at another place. Tell me about Theo Vision and you're celebrating your anniversary. So tell us what you've lined up for that. We are 30 years this year. Oh, wow. <laughs> and uh, tomorrow, 17th May, mm -hmm. uh, is when we are kicking start okay. we are launching the celebration okay okay so this year from now till next may mm. will be a lot of activities okay. for the ovation celebrating the 30 years okay. we will visit churches we will visit villages mm. um after tomorrow's event the major event will be 6 December, okay. which will bring more people together mm. to actually share testimonies, stories, okay. impact of what the Lord has done. 30 years, it's not a small thing. It certainly yeah. isn't a small <laughs> thing. And so, we are proud of you. And yeah. I hope that this reaches many more communities. Right, right. And I pray that the scope, you know, enlarges so that yeah. everyone can benefit from this. Kudos exactly. to you. Let me say thank you to you, Reverend Theodore Mensa Asari. He's president and founder for Theovision International. And also to you, Pastor Eric Usa, group leader in the field ministries. And I'm sure you enjoy this interview and you're inspired by it. Make sure if you have anyone in a community who probably needs to learn the Bible because they can't read or write, do get in touch with Theovision International. I'm sure they are all over. You can Google them. You'll find their numbers. You can call them and get in touch with them and get that device for a friend or family or loved one. On that note, we'll take a break. When we come back, Bright will be joined in studio to discuss newspaper headlines and the review. We'll go through the details in it and we'll make the day bright for you. Make sure you stay with us. We'll take a break. We'll be back. The Ghanaian Times begins the morning and says that eight fire service personnel dismissed uh, between January and April. Uh, NIA staff arrested for uh, night registration precedent visits uh, or presents vehicles to OT region. Uh, those are some of the stories on the Daily uh, the Ghanaian Times Daily Graphic. I was killed over snails. Isiakwa teaches dying words. Pass Wasi to shame free senior high school opposers. That's a precedent talking there. The finder, business finder says banks capital hits 9 billion uh, cities at the end of February 2019. Uh, Daily graphic threat of terrorism. Security agencies meet churches. Chief Imam urges Muslims to report strange elements. Those are some of the stories I have with me this morning. Now, to do the talking from extreme left MP for uh, Sagnarugu and a member of the NDC is here. Aladji, you be here for Good morning. Good morning. Hope you're Good doing night. great. By the grace of God, mm. we are tired. Great. In these difficult times. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Kabila is here. Kabila I know you, but you prefer calling him Kabila. Kabila, good morning. <laughs> good morning. <laughs> Hope you're doing great. We're good. You've been grace missing. Found us. You have been missing. Let's you left me out there. Oh, coach. <laughs> Let's hope that now that you are back, you, you will stay. <laughs> All right. Welcome once again. And then Eric Chum is a member of the NPP. So very good morning to you. Good morning, I Bryce. hope you're great. I'm doing well. Mm -hmm. Are you also in difficult times? Hey, you can't. 
What's that? What's, what's difficult time? And I just said that is difficult time. <laughs> well, trying to spin. Oh, I see. Definitely difficult, but right. I'm sure. When, when that the even is what? How can you blow to the candy? I'm sure that even <laughs> when I saw Alaji and his how he's looking resplendent, <laughs> you can never convince anybody that he's <laughs> okay. In difficult time. All right, uh, let's start the conversation this morning. Let, let's take a look at uh, um, uh, um, what. Dr. Kedra Farajan has been saying about the Electoral Commission quickly before we come to the issue of terrorism. Uh, Dr. Farajan is suggesting that time will expose lies of politicians about the Electoral Commission. Now, he has observed that with time, the lies being peddled about the Electoral Commission by various political parties will be exposed. The EC, according to Dr. Farajan, is always at the center of accusations of rigging elections in favor of one political party or the other by these politicians as an excuse for their inability to win the polls, as promised their financiers. Now, according to Dr. Farajan, um, these politicians, when they lose badly, then they must find excuses to hide behind their defeat, expressing hope that with time the falsehood about the commission will be exposed. This is Dr. Farajan's uh, issue. And uh, referring to what he says, uh, always the attitude of the position towards the Electoral Commission. Eric, let me start the conversation with you. It, is this an apt description of political parties uh, against the EC when they find themselves in the position only? Well, um, good morning. Mm. Uh, good morning to the viewers and then to my seniors here this morning. I haven't seen Kabila for a while. Mm. We used to eat fufu <laughs> at some joints. <laughs> oh, okay, that means that, you, uh, you, it means that you, you, you have left him. No, but he is in, he, apparently he's in Cape Coast. He should ah, have told okay. me <laughs> so that anytime I'm going to Cape Coast, okay. I would uh, stop over and then we can eat some, some fufu. Alaji, good morning as well. Well, I mean, I think that uh, for Dr. Farijan, having been at the Electoral Commission for a very long time, has seen different governments come and go and has uh, superintended, I think it's superintended about five elections or mm. so. And so um, <clears throat> I'm not going to sit here and uh, disagree with him or not indulge him in terms of his uh, views and opinions. I believe strongly that because of the kind of democracy that we have, and we also have to be very uh, sometimes accommodating uh, with ourselves. We've been running this thing for the last 25, 26 years or mm. so. And for any democracy, that's a, still an extremely uh, young democracy. But we've made giant strides. We started from these opaque ballot boxes and uh, a register that didn't have biometric uh, protocols to where we are today. So over the period, I'm sure that of course, we've had challenges, and even the EC as an entity itself, uh, in certain times, have not covered themselves in glory in terms of some acts of omissions and commissions. But we've learned, I think, that over the period, the processes itself and the players within that particular uh, landscape have also become a bit more uh, matured in terms of our orientation. We still have some way to go, mm. uh, but I believe strongly that, of course, because of the whole conversation around um, what we used to call Vinatex or Kobla, when at the IEA, where there's always this uh, clamor for a certain convergence, a consensus on how we even govern ourselves. And it's always an opposition party that will take the lead, but when you come into power, uh, you're not sure you want to go that route. So for me, I think that the, the tension and the, uh, the sort of stakes that you would um, necessarily be facing is so high that there's tension. And of course, when you go into an election, nobody goes into an election to lose. So there are certain elements, even in the last elections where our brothers from the NDC were in a comfortable lead, but they had clearly lost the election. And when you drill down, you find out that it's even as a, a way of trying to galvanize the base and show up the base a little bit until the whole 
idea that an election has been lost is speculated through or it's cascaded down to the to the to the bottom. Then the leaders will be able to put themselves together and do something uh, that is really like noble, like conceding an election and all of those things. We need to have a bit more trust amongst ourselves in terms of where we are going and what the processes are. And this whole unnecessary pressure that we put on the EC or any EC, I'm talking about the EC. The electoral entity, commission, yes, right. Where when one party is in power, uh, they seem to be the uh, PR consultants or mouthpieces of the EC and the opposition we see everything wrong with what the EC does. Really, I don't think can be the case. And the thing is that we've, we've got to a point where there's some level of uh, transparency to the point that the whole pro the processes that the EC go through, even at the polling station level, especially for the two uh, biggest parties in Ghana, I don't come now not like that, but for the two parties that have had the opportunity to govern this country since 1992. They seem to have that level of architecture on the ground to be able, and infrastructure on the ground to be able to track everything that the EC does. So sometimes the whole idea or perception that uh, there's something untoward happening and everything really needs to be investigated a bit properly. But okay. we've come a long way. Okay. I mean, Eric, I'm grateful. Way. Kabila, is it, is it perhaps the actions and the inactions of the EC that open politicians to that perception that the EC is doing something wrong? Well, let me begin by saying that uh, Eric may be right when he says that the two parties with representation in parliament, <laughs> as for big ness and smallness mm. is another issue <laughs> to because talk about. really really and there's literature to support that record keeping among political parties in ghana is an issue that you he cannot tell us today the exact membership of his party for example if we were to do that we would then be able to aggregate and tell who has a larger following and, and so on and so but that's another debate mm. I think the thrust of what Dr. Aforijan is saying is misrepresenting the Electoral Commission mainly because they do not pronounce elections in our favor. And we have seen that in our history. For anybody to suggest, particularly following Ghana's move into biometrics <coughs> or using um, technology, to improve on our electoral system since 2012. For anybody to suggest that one would be able to, on the, on the power and the authority of the Electoral Commission, you know, distort elections, rig elections, cheat in elections, and go undetected, sitting here, I will have my doubts. You see, the thing about technology, that it is not a sine qua non, it is not an absolute. Mm. Yet, technology gives us a higher reliance in the system such that nothing wrong can go undetected unless you don't follow through. At every stage throughout the chain, at every trail of actions, you can tell when something goes wrong. And I will say that it will be difficult for the Electoral Commission, whoever it is representing their body, to call elections against the true will of the people at any point in time, and that will go undetected. It is not possible. We know it. Of I course, see. people would attempt to manipulate the system. Mm. I'm not by this suggesting that it is not possible to manipulate, manipulate the system. Right. Even the technology that is procured is manipulable. It can be manipulated. That is why it's important that integrity issues, the robustness and rigorousness of the software or the technology that is employed are intact. And that is why from time to time, political parties, and I have been there representing my party so for, some, for some time now, mm. that both the technical and the legal issues are strictly adhered to. But I think the point he's making is, is, is so, so important that 
we refrain from calling the Electoral Commission bad names when, in fact, we know they don't deserve to be called those bad names. We have called them names, especially chairs of the commission. Mm. In the end, their pronouncements have shown that the names that we gave them really were not accurate. And we all should be minded and we should be careful. The key thing he asks is that, in fact, providence, or if you like, time. posterity yeah. time will expose the lies, the various conspiracy theories that are thrown about. I hate to en en indulge them because you see, they are so dangerous that if you want to indulge the conspiracy theories, you will never trust anybody. You would never. But as Eric pointed out, we need to build a certain level of trust. Trust, I mean, for ourselves. No nation can go on under the heels of mutual suspicion and needless, uh, 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 you know, suspicions of mitra or mit or mistrust. It cannot be. We need to appreciate that or, or give each, one, each other the benefit of the doubt that we are concerned about the building of this nation. Aladji may not agree with my methods, mm. but I must give him the benefit of the doubt that his methods are also noble. Eric may not agree with me, but I must also give him the benefit of the doubt that his I mean, uh, uh, ideas and views are noble. They may not be the same. After all, realities are different. And there are many ways to reach a point. Yours may be through one path. His may be through another. But who says there are only two channels? There may be a third or fourth or fifth. So why do you think that yours is superior than mine? The most important thing is to respect the mandate of the people mm. when it has been given to an authority to govern. Mm. And I think that we should be guided in our utterances. Bottom line, once we are guided and we don't say things that are fatal, to the integrity and the image of the Electoral Commission, we are good to go. That is not to suggest that they are beyond criticism right. or reproach. Mm. We have had occasions to question them, mm. including their losing cases in court. <laughs> <laughs> He's a general secretary of the CPP. Yeah. Hey, Alaji, so how should these members of the commission, particularly those at the top, behave so that they the, the politician won't even have a, a, an issue at all to raise anything about lies with, 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 with the work they do. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, right, let me say good morning to the viewers mm. of TV3, uh, to your good self, my brother Eric, and uh, my lost comrade. <laughs> long lost. Uh, long lost comrade. <laughs> it's, it's good that you have had the magic to pull him here <laughs> for us to see him after a very long time. Uh, I want to just tell him that uh, no matter how disenchanted the old soldier is, you never shy away from the barracks. That's right. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> yeah. uh, let me also say a good morning to the good people of the San Arugu Constituency, uh, by whose courtesy I'm here. Uh, right, let me say uh, first and foremost that, see, on the day the village market is commissioned, that is the name, day they will give it a name. Uh, it is not for nothing that images are couched. And I want to say without any act of hesitation that maybe until very recently, the image and integrity of our electoral commission has been very, very sacrosanct and, and universally acclaimed until few things happen, and I will go into some of them. Uh, let me set this record straight, that the NDC has no record of officially challenging an election. Disputing no, 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 officially, they, they, uh, that's uh, official. uh, going okay. to court to uh, challenge officially. Yes. Okay. That, that that's 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 I'm, I'm not. Okay. 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 I'll, I'll come to if, if you have something to, to contradict to, to dispute. So, in, 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 in 2004, in 2004, we didn't go to court. You went to court. You went to court. No. The matter was told. No, no. You were told that you should come to court properly. I said that we didn't. We didn't go back. If they tell you that come properly, you go back and come again. Allow the rule. So, so officially, did we go to court? You went it, it, using anyway, the legal people's team. You never went to court. If you go to court and the court tells you go back and come properly, mm. and you go and you never come again, have you gone to court? Ah. Have you gone to court? You have never gone to court because they tell you go and come back properly. You go and you don't come back. 
Where is the record that you are in court? It's debatable. It's not debatable. It's not debatable. I like the role on. I am well, telling I'm you really that it's not, Kabila, it's not debatable. Mm. Mm. Dr. In 1992, Dr. Has been unlike, names unlike, the unlike the MPP. He said official. In 1992, yes, yeah. that's what I said. In 1992, the MPP was in court and, and wrote the stolen verdict. Did they go to court? Okay. Mm. In, 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 in 2000, no. 92, did they go they to officially, court? They didn't. They didn't. They pulled out of the parliamentary That was not only them. Including the, the PNC, yes. Yes, so you were not part the alliance. Of the no, the PNC was not part of it. Let me, Kabila, then you tell me, I can be, if you have something, you, you just, you allow just allow note it down when I come, come then you come. You. We'll have a second okay. light, two minutes each Then, time. then, 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 in, 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 yeah. uh, uh, after that, the, the stolen verdict, yes. eh? in 20, you saw what happened in 2012, very protected for almost a year, when caught contesting the outcome of the 2012 elections. We sent mixed signals across the world. And eventually, right, the issue was settled. OK? Now, we've, we, we, one of the things that have uh, uh, brought the issue of the uh, integrity of, of the uh, persons running our elections into this thing was in the run up to the 2016 election. I have never, and, and, and it, it, it was no other party, again, but the MPP. That made very serious and damning allegations against the chairperson of the electoral commission to the point that she had traded some other favors to get that position and that she had been brought there to, to, to rig the election for the uh, uh, NDC. Right. Just like the advice and the counsel that uh, Dr. Farajan gave, that if you make those baseless allegations against EC officials, the declaration of the results will expose you. So when the results were declared, the very person who was assailed with all those kinds of allegations and criticisms was a person who held the hand of President Anna Kufado and declared him the victor in the 2016 elections. So what the MPP should have done decently, as, decent, as a decent political party, should have been to render an unqualified apology, not only to the lady, but to Ghanaians as a whole, for making those baseless allegations. It never happened. Brad, on the contrary, they proceeded to take steps to remove her from office. And that is what has sent this, uh, uh, the, 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 the whole thing about our electoral body spinning. Never in the annals of our country's history have we traversed that path where a sitting government uses its uh, political power to get somebody removed as a chairperson of the electoral body. What you want to say it was a political power? Was it, it was. It was. A it was. set up by. Look, I mean, the, the right, right processes were... I can even were, tell you that the MPP is in a hurry to waste side processes. There is a, a petition by the people of La for the removal of the chief justice. Has the president referred it? So it says that he's a conveyor belt. He, 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 anything that can, he will, has he referred the petition of the people of La? But in the case of the... the, the this, they've got faceless people. Look, Brad, all of us know how the, 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 the issue was uh, decided. That when even the petition was even 40, they had to give it back, back to them to go back and collect it and bring it back. Somebody who was among the petitioners was somebody who was dead from the letter commission years ago. He was among the petitioners. How can, uh, uh, Brad, can a dead man petition? His name was among the petitioners which found its way to the presidency for which the president acted. So when you have all these dubious circumstances, I mean, coming together, to result in the removal of the chairperson of the letter commission, you are creating a very serious uh, 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 doubt. And worst of all, the people you bring in, if there's reason to believe that some of them, and, uh, and, and it is on record, they are mentioning Dr. Bosman Asari as a patron of Tesco in Lebanon. He's a known MPP person, and he's been touted now as the vice chairperson of the letter commission. What are you doing to our letter uh, 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 body? The sanctity of our elections. I say that we should not do anything that will create doubts in the minds of the people. That even up in issue, from the very onset, the character of the people that you are bringing. I, 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 I say that people suspect that there are people in your stable. At least nobody could find Dr. Farajan and, 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 and link him to any political party. You can do 100 years of research. You get nothing. Even the Shalotto say, all they say, they could not bring one out of proof to show. Because she stood on the ticket of the NDC somewhere in the West. It's it's never. Never. It was not proven. Right? Never. It's not true. It was a figment of somebody's imagination. 
But if did you, well, well, people are making allegations against Dr. Boss, but if you go to Lego, then what is there? That he was a test competitor. You know that for a fact. Yes. He's a test, he was a test competitor. You understand? Uh, there are allegations against uh, uh, the chairperson yes, uh, I don't want to go into that at the moment. But this is where uh, what is setting. And so from the, from the onset, we should not do that <clears throat> to create doubts in the minds of the people that you are packing the commission with your, your, your party members and supporters so that they can do your bidding. Even if that is not the intention. Eh? Uh, uh, Bright, when, when all of us are standing erect and you alone, you squat, and we find something there, we say, we, we put it there. That's why the government say that squatting is like doing something. It's in the morning. I don't want to go there. <laughs> but that is what it is. <laughs> so it is important for us to safeguard the sanctity of, our, uh, of, of the commission because, like I said, Ghana has mm. had one image and integrity in our democratic process. It's anchored solidly on, our, on, 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 on the credibility of our elections. So we should not do anything to do that. So I, 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 I see what Dr. Farijan is saying as a vindication at the end result of what uh, 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 allegations people make. Mm. But let us also know that the Electoral Commission is also staffed by human beings. It's not a perfect institution. So they can go wrong. It's possible. Look, in the run-up to the 2016 election, you know at a certain point in the declaration of results, the declaration was suspended. Because what did they say? They said that the trans electronic transmission of the results were compromised. I'm sure you are aware. You are looking at me and smiling. <laughs> you are aware. I, 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 so, you I, I, see, I, 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 so, I so I'm saying that, that, I'm saying that I, there are many issues, mm, right, yeah. which all of us as a people must deal with. And that is why uh, 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 all of us must be very vigilant in the run up to the 2016 election. From the, pro from the very onset of the uh, uh, compilation of the voters' register, we have to open our eyes and be sure that not a single Ghanaian is disenfranchised. We are already hearing a number of things about the method with which the, 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 the registration uh, 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 or, or the, the compilation of the voters' register will go using either the Ghana card or something to disenfranchise. We should all be alert and ensure that no single Ghanaian mm. is disenfranchised. Okay. Every Ghanaian, the constitution of this republic, right, has made abundantly clear who is qualified to feature as a voter. Okay. But, Brian, but like I'm grateful. Let Kabila come in I, briefly and then we can move on. I think the most important point to appreciate here is that whilst um, following what Dr. Frajan said, it is important that people or persons who get the opportunity to work in that um, revered outfit, mm. Electoral Commission, hold themselves in high regard and above reproach. It's important. You see, I, what I find strange is what my big brother, Alaji, has done this morning. I, quite, I find it quite strange. You see, I share in his view on what the new patriotic party and its assigns did to Charlotte Osei. When she was appointed and in the conduct of her works, eventually, as it turned out, when she had to declare, or the people of Ghana decided that Nana Dudan Kwakufuadu should be declared president, she had no option than to declare the aspiration and the will of the people. And I think, I agree with him that those persons in the new patriotic party who made those disparaging comments about her owed it to Ghanaians to apologize to the person of Charlotte Osei and to the good people of this country. But why do I say I find it strange? You have said this here, and you're doing the same thing to Jim Mensa. Have the results been declared? Please, yeah, please, I, please, I, please, I, I, please. I, I, please. I, 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 I allow you, you come back, so don't interrupt. You see, you see, I allow you come back, so don't interrupt. You see, you are doing this to Jim Let, let, let's be brief about it so that we can. And you are doing this thing to Dr. Uh, Asare Bosman. Look, he taught me in political science at the master's level. I don't know of his party affiliation, mm. and I engage him politically. I have no reason to doubt you, but I will. That is if, if what he said is if what he's saying is okay. true. But I have my doubts that he would be, uh, uh, he was patron of, of, of MPP. Okay, we'll uh, sorry, okay. of, Tescon. Of right. Tescon. But we'll find out, we'll find out. Even, even, even if he uh, was, even if he was, mm. how does that disqualify him from becoming okay. appointed as chair of the, you see the danger in doing these things is that I'm sitting here, I'm the acting general secretary of the CPP. You are saying that tomorrow I'm not qualified to hold any public office in another government? Because I'm CPP? It's 
Listen, George. So, so if your candidate wins an election and makes you the chair of the electoral commission, mm -hmm. that, that would be fine as the, the acting mm -hmm. general secretary. Mm -hmm. If mm -hmm. my, if your your candidate, my CPP candidate, candidate yes. wins election, yes. 2020 no. election, yes. and makes the acting general secretary a chair of the CPP, that would be fine. That is when the position has become vacant. Uh, uh, and uh, I have uh, the qualification uh, uh, too. Okay. I see nothing wrong with you. So that would be fine. Okay. You see, you see. I mean, let's go. you should get my position. Mm. I have heard people say that if your father holds a certain position, you should not be appointed into. I don't belong to that school mm. of thought. People must be measured on their own mm. merits. Mm. But this thing about your relation this, your relation that, if we do that, we are okay. Are you saying that I should suffer despite my sterling qualities? Because my father has been MCE in Kintampo before, I should not be appointed into an, a, any other position in Kintampo. What, what, what logic is that? It's dangerous. And Alaji, you wouldn't want that to be done to your son in San Diego. So don't let us play that line. Even if Dr. Asari Bosman was an MPP uh, uh, constituency officer somewhere, mm. it does not, this, uh, it does not, huh? this, uh, uh, it does not uh, disbar him from. Let me ask you a question. Holding Can such a person be impartial? <laughs> Impartiality is a subjective thing. But we it must is? all yes yes it is but there are objective standards to which it can be, it can be measured. You see, take my my issues the issues that I'm raising in context. I'm not saying that should be the norm. All right. But I'm saying that there is nothing wrong with it. But it then imposes a responsibility on the individual that once you are being appointed from a certain stock, that may seem to be wanting to do something to this its advantage. You need to hold yourself above reproach. So that nobody would say that you are doing this because of your party or that party. Otherwise, we will not even have judges. Who says our judges don't have right, uh, right, uh, right, political right. leanings? I'll, I'll, I'll come to you, but Eric will do yes. some. Okay. So okay. Is Two it, minutes and then we'll go uh, to Alaji. Okay. I think that uh, Kabila is basically taking the win out of my soul. But uh, just a couple, just last week, former President Mahama was in Oxford. And he was talking about the 2016 election being rigged. He didn't say that. Let okay. Me he didn't say okay. that. It was a media twist. Yeah, okay. 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 Because uh, uh, yes. I discussed it from what I'm asking. I, 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 I was asking the whole thing. Eric, Eric, did you read it or you read from the news? Let me finish. No, there's a debate about that. My brother, let me make it. 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 Let I use the word yeah, suggested. He didn't suggest that. He didn't suggest that. Did you ask him? Eric, did you read from that. the newspapers? Why, or are you listening to why, so I will share this. Am I allowed to? You, you're continue. allowed to, but we, we just continue. want to clear this because I'm, I'm, clearly he didn't say that from what we heard. That, but the newspaper well, said what did he say, that is what right? he said. What did he, say? He, he did not say that it was rigged. What did he say? He did not say it was rigged. He expressed misgivings about and doing what? Asking the EC to come out and clarify, right? And determine how IT systems were hacked exactly. and that might have led to rigging and oh, he even he made, listen, listen, making reference to Kenya and Sierra Leone or whatever mm. in recent past. But you see, apart from that, I was very restrained because like I'm saying, we're still a fledging democracy. We've made mistakes in the past and everything. But even Dr. Dan himself, this conversation around posterity and everything. It's fine because, you see, it's a hindsight thing. And they say hindsight is a beautiful thing. There's still an outstanding 750,000 people who were part of the 2012 elections that Dr. Farijan has not been able to come out and tell us where those people came from, who were people who were registered abroad. Are you going about Dr. No, you see, no, no, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, you see, I'm saying that. And when they, he was asked to provide those details in court, as we speak today, he was unable to. I think you were able to bring about 712 or so. Now, that's what I'm saying, that the EC itself, as an, a body, as an entity, mm. had done certain things that has not, it's not something that we can call uh, uh, perfect, and have not covered itself in glory in certain aspects. But we can move on. You understand? Yeah, no. So okay. to try and... Uh, okay, Eric, let me move on. Because I'm running out of time. And make it look like, uh, uh, well, uh, uh, everything uh, uh, has coming. gone on uh, perfectly. Uh, uh, briefly. Or in the EC. Uh, Alaji will just do one minute and then we'll, we'll move on. Uh, but let me us, remind all of us that right. the EC has said somewhere, mm. uh, I think somewhere uh, that uh, it, it got it wrong because its systems were not hacked. Uh, Alaji, I think you referred to that, but later on the EC said that the system but that is not hacked. But that is where the problem uh -huh, is. Uh -huh. The chairperson made the pronouncement. Right. Uh -huh. The subsequent one was made by 
it, somebody in the PR in the, office. Yeah, exactly. See? The and I've said that the EC must come clear on that. You see? If nothing happened, mm -hmm. why did Charlotte also tell the whole, the whole that, country and the world that this is And in fact, no, she didn't say act. She said that that was compromised. Was compromised. Let's okay. Let's, 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 let's wrap up and let's move on. That's a second point. That's a second point. Okay. I'm saying that. The three of us here, we are politicians, you see, and sometimes it's important that on issues like this, we actually have a certain convergence because mm. it's always a tendency for those players to play us against each other. In the final analysis, we are stakeholders. They have a responsibility to do the right things, to make sure that the Electoral Commission as an entity is able to, one, prosecute elections, that is free and fair. That's it. Okay. You know, so for us, so for us to sit here and say that okay, the MPP has a different position, the CPP has a different position, the NDC has a different position, actually plays into their hands. That's my view. I'm, I'm grateful. I'll let you wrap up for me. You see, uh, uh, let's. Uh, right. You see, the evidence of this about whether the system was out was a suspension of the declaration of results. It was a fact. It was suspended over a certain period. Why? But because <laughs> it, there are so many reasons. Please, please, please. please, please, please. please. I'm there. telling you, that's the reason. There are, so, do you know, I'm, so, I'm, many so many that one is and, and I'm sure that Eric should be the last person to be throwing figures, asking Afarijan for figures. And Look, Dr. Baunya. <laughs> Dr. Baunya. <laughs> I, 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 I don't like this law of Omi's girl. But I've always said that if he gives you good money, look at the position of the sun before you respond. <laughs> look, this issue about. The figures. He held a press conference. You remember about the voter region figures that he gave. Over 70,000. And that was 10% of Only what he said. DC, uh, chair. He said it. And that the, the voters register was inundated with Togolese. And that he had discovered 70,000 voters. And that was one tenth. So multiply by 10, 700,000. He okay. Since then, he had never come out to prove the figures. We are asking the Rafaja to come out and prove the figures. Go and ask Dr. Bamiya to prove the figures that he brought. I'm grateful. But I, am, no, but I, am, I have not come to the substance of it. I like you quickly. I, I, I sympathize with the points, but the human being is a complex machine. Of course. True. So that is why, uh, 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 Bright, they craft something called conflict of interest. Mm. That because you are human, uh, Bright, if they ask you if you are a judge and they bring your son before you, in almost all probability, you will have emotions. He's your son. I recuse myself. So here, yeah, so that's why in, in the judiciary, people have what they call recusing themselves from cases. Yes. Mm. Because of certain emotional attachment yes. they have to the decision. Yes. So you go and make a course, uh, a test con, uh, 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 but that is not I like it. I like it. I like it. yet. Let me know. You know that for a I am telling you that it's a fact. Which year? He himself has not denied it. No, which year was it? You are making allegations. I am just telling you. I am just said that he was a patron until he left the university. If you say otherwise, that be true. Yeah, I'm saying the truth. Yeah, okay. okay, I get my producers to uh, <laughs> you find out that. He was until he left. <laughs> like, but, but let's move on. Patron, president. Patron. I said test one patron. But he left. Aladdin has finished. You see, so I'm saying that. Aladdin is done. I'm grateful. We have 15 minutes. Aladdin. I'm just saying. Let me land on this. Are you saying that in the appointment of the decision, if you had to appoint somebody against whom allegations can be made that he's a test one, you can't get any better person again. In the whole country, are you saying? To are you saying? 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 you can't get any other capable person. Are you? He's the only capable person. No, 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 no. What are you saying? 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 Are you 15 minutes on the 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 radio thing i think that let's broaden the conversation as to uh, which direction should we go kabila let me start this conversation with this story is well known which direction should we go in protecting media houses and to also ensure that we have a, a press that is not stopped from doing what it's want to do i will start by saying that in this country we are um in many ways a group of lawless people pretending to be law abiding and we pretend in many of our issues and cases I don't see how this matter traveled the distance that it has traveled to this from 95 all the way to now. Yes. and you see it's as if we are discussing radio gold and XYZ it goes beyond these two institutions 
And so I want to preface my comments and my recommendations with a, um, a, a statement that in this matter, mm. NCA versus those stations that they have closed down, nobody is entirely blameless and nobody is entirely blamable. I mean, nobody is entirely blamable and nobody is entirely blameless. Each of the institutions involved will have their fair share if we want to look into the matter, dissecting it to the core. But what should we get there? There are questions that Radio Gold and XYZ will have to answer. There are questions that NCA, as a corporate institution, will have to answer. And I don't want to be told that it is this regime. Mm. We must build institutions. And when you inherit in, and in, I mean, challenges within an institution, right from day one, you should be seen as tackling those problems if you want to show that you are a, 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 a macho and a strong man who wants to change things. You don't wait till two years down the line and begin to take action. That itself shows a complicity in, on your part. And we need to be mindful of that. Look, per the decision of the Supreme Court in the uh, Radio I case, you cannot operate within the media landscape unchecked or unregulated. In fact, I would have been surprised if the Supreme Court had not made that pronouncement. Because we are human beings. Mm. We can't give... We can't ask everybody else to be regulated, but allow the media to go unregulated. Why? Are they made of superhuman beings? And the dangerous thing is that the power of the media to do evil is more ravaging than anything else. The media, as much as it can do good, its power to destroy is greater and immense. And we must not, I mean, uh, underestimate that possibility. Mm. So it's important, and that's why we have the NCA regulating the spectrum, we have the uh, NMC, which the CPP has suggested it should be made an authority. Because if you look at the advance of media landscape now and the sophistication and um, social media and all these things, that, does the National Media Commission have the capacity to monitor all these things? You need to make it an authority and strengthen it, empower it more, resource it more, so that they can work and ensure that we regulate some of these things. You know, I believe that there is some tension between our inner desire to get things working for us in this country mm. and our attitudes which are so incongruent with that desire coming into full force against one another, manifesting in some of the issues that we have had. Otherwise, I don't believe that even the Jaxtapo Rambo style with which the NCA went to those stations to go and close them down was necessary. Those stations did not also have to wait till that time for these things to happen. So, right, I say that everybody has questions to, I mean, answer. to answer. So, at this stage, my suggestion mm, quickly is that we must make sure that they sit down and talk. I've just been given a copy of uh, the statement that was issued by the chief executive, no, chief executive of uh, Radio Gold, my good friend James Ajinim Boateng. And I think that uh, per the content of this statement is a way to go. Is a way to go. And I believe that the NCA leadership would also listen and let us work because this matter has needlessly entered into a political fray. Right which has given it an entirely new dimension, as though whatever we are doing is politically motivated and has nothing uh, 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 empirical or nothing, if you like, you know, uh, uh, to speak to with respect to the laws or guiding the activities or operations of these stations. And we need to grow uh, above um, in those things. Okay. And then we need to also make sure that in applying the laws, we are not selective. We should be even handed and brought in uh, uh, and all and, and, and comparison in ensuring that we are not accused of selectivity or bias in any way whatsoever. Uh, Eric, come in. Give us more recommendations uh, as to which way to go. For me, I think that um, uh, to a larger extent, I agree with Kabila in the sense of the fact that something has to give. And regardless of the fact that you would accuse the NCA of going to sleep, over a period, at what point would NCA have to start 
cracking the whip and making sure that the right things are done. So all those entities that find themselves culpable as we speak. And you see, there are so many different infractions. Apparently, there's about 132 of these media houses that have Issues, issues with the NCA. And the major, the, the most, um, the gravest ones are the ones who basically have not paid for their spectrum over a period and don't have authorization to actually operate. And I feel that because of all the things that have happened over the period and they are uh, building some brand equity over the period and all of those things, the law should be applied, I mean, in a strict form. And then, Whilst they are open, the NCA yeah, it does not is amount to guarding no, the media. No, it's if, not. If that, the law it's, is it, it, it's not at all. Straight as well. It's like it's akin to saying that uh, you go into a community and there's a quack doctor operating who has been able to deliver some babies and has been able to give uh, remedies to certain people, and because of that, you should allow him to operate. You understand? It's akin to that. And the okay. thing is that we need to be principled and anchor some of these are things in in principle. If it's wrong, it's wrong. Is there a way of engaging the NCA uh, with the other stakeholders to make sure that, well, it doesn't happen again? There are systems in place to alert people that, listen, my authorization is due and the NCA itself is proactive. And like Kabila said, I mean, some of the cases, it goes as far back as 2000 or so, which means that we're talking about a 19-year period and some even way beyond that. What it means is that there's a certain element of culpability from the, the authority itself in mm. terms of making sure that people are up to scratch with whatever licensing and authorizations that they require. But the law needs to be applied. You see, we have this conversation all the time about strong institutions and you quote Obama and all of those things. And then all of a sudden, when it applies to us, we pick and choose what is, needs to be applied. And it's more, almost as if that we are operating this whole democracy okay. on an expedient level. Let's apply the law, the law no matter who is involved. Form, okay. uh, no matter whose us is gone. Okay. And then, because of the fact that we are human beings and we have all these other considerations, let there be some kind of interaction between the NCA and the various stakeholders, GIBA and co, and find a solution to that. But that call, that orientation that the right things need to be done shouldn't be something that the media because by view or the dint or the fact that it's meant to be uh, freedom of information and they have a right to, so they would do everything that they like. But we're as far as I'm concerned, we're, 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 if, we're, I want, uh, Eric, if I want Eric, Eric, a, a spectrum Eric, today. Eric, quickly, Eric, quickly. Yeah. But what's told, you see, that a repressive government have always used uh, the law to, to, to gag media houses. No, so but, that, see, that, that but I, 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 I don't see that. You see, the thing is that in the same vein, with that same logic, you can use that logic as an excuse or a justification not to do the right thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Family. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful. Uh, yeah, yeah, so, so uh, you, Johnny, let's take some you, comment. Yeah. And NCA yeah. shut down Siani Bates Pro NPP Space FM. And that's also another one here. Uh, Johnny, right. come on once again. I have just, so you're right. I've just Thank conferred you. with my, my oh, former oh, uh, master. The master. The master. Dr. Bosman has never been a test Yeah. Okay. He should prove it. I have to my producers to find out for me. We have not been following I mean, oh, I can okay. understand Tesco, that. Tesco, 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 he that's wasn't. He has never been. Is it Tesco in Samirgu? Is it Tesco in Samirgu? Let's get the man. 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 let us get the man 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 let
uh, Karen T.C. Boss declared 99.9% .9 voter turnout in the regional creation uh, votes. That's the referenda. Uh, Kwesi La Paz. Good morning. Uh, TV3, the day that the village market is commissioned, that is the day it will be named. So the very day the ruling government took steps to remove Madame Charlotte Osei and replaced her with uh, Madame Jean Mensah was the day the EC uh, his name was changed to elections corruption. Alaji, you do all. Don't mind Kabila. TV3, election rigging starts from the process to the day of election. The current leadership of the EC is trying so hard to use the process to rig the election for the MPP. Joseph Boga alleges. Senator Bright from Dan Suman says, please tell Kwabena Bonfair that it's not true that the EC can't rig an election for a party. Ask Bonfair if he's comfortable with the arrogant posturing of Bosman and Jim Mensa. They are incompetent and if care is not elections? taking, they will care <laughs> create problems for the country <laughs> ever. Uh, Michael Amini in the UK says, the so-called media vanguard who are making so much noise about the shutdown, Radio Gold or XYZ should spare ears with their hypocrisy because if they have complied or they had complied strictly with the laws that set up their operations, the NCA would not have shut them down. There are other law-abiding media stations who have no problem with the NCA and are free in doing their work without hindrance. The government of President Kufuado has no agenda in suppressing the media because President Kufuado has sacrificed a lot for the Ghanaian media. According to Aladji Fuseni, a dead uh, person petitioned Nanado before Charlotte Osei was removed uh, as an MP and a lawmaker. What he did do to counter the petition? Let's help the country to grow. Joseph Otu is a communications officer at the Shaman asking Aladji a question. Yeah. A.U. Farouk in Tamil he says, Good morning to you all. MPP through Ga thought Ghanaians have short memories. MPP in 2000 said uh, when they come to power, MPP will convert all slums in Ghana to world-class flats. Uh, that was a 2000 uh, manifesto. Atacha is repeating the same line now. Ghanaians are not fools. Delata Kradi Kujukrum says, in fact, Ghanaians are now wide awake about those who bastardize the EC whenever they lose power or they lost power. Uh, Bright, 1992, the MPP wrote stolen verdict, which no one stole their verdict. Bright, 2004, they won without EC uh, Gazette in the result. Bright, in 2012, they went to the Supreme Court that 76,000 Togolese voted for Mahama. Should they be, uh, so they should be cancelled. Bright, where is David Asante of Let My Vote Count? By their fruits, we shall know them. And with all this, we should know that the MPP are hazardous to our democracy because it goes for them. Uh, when it goes for them, there's peace. It doesn't, and there's fire upon them. Deadline, Takradi Kujukrum. Olajio Nakwitia says, since the NDC is out of government, I have not heard NDC say uh, what's motivating them to come to government again or power again. All I hear is to criticize policies and initiatives without ref uh, preferring alternatives. NDC can never again become an alternative to the presidency to give way to create loot and share. Now the EIU comes with uh, another victory for MPP. My question is uh, NDC, how far? Bright, finally, good morning. And to the panelists, my old friend Kabila, is it true that NDC went to court? Uh, it was Saturday to the wrong court and their case was not well presented. Who do Sally and Damongo is mocking <laughs> from? Uh, <laughs> and uh, and uh, <laughs> he's asking, interesting. So many comments here, yeah, right, uh, but we'll have to we'll yeah. have to uh, we'll read all of them yeah, in the course of the Thank you I'll very like much. Wrap up our conversation yeah. right. uh, I just want to uh, urge my comrade Kabila that if he has wise counsel to give, he should give it to his uh, very good friend, Dr. Bosman. The way he speaks, and in fact, he's, the EC has a spokesperson, he has uh, somebody who speaks for the EC, he has even taken that duty, and the things he says, as everybody who hears, in fact, when you hear him, you you you, you will be left with any doubt. I have no no, no doubt in your mind about his uh, MPP credentials. But that one, let's leave it aside. Uh, no, we are talking about. Let me have my time. I 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 have Please, let me go to my, my substantive <laughs> issue. Okay. I'm saying that, you see, uh, uh, Bright, uh, I associate myself with some of the things uh, Comrade Kabila and uh, Eric. my brother Eric said. <laughs> and I say without any iota of doubt that there are responsibilities on both sides. Yeah. That the radio stations and the others have responsibilities to fulfill in respect of their obligations to the NCA. And the NCA also has obligations to fulfill. But, you see, we are talking about the right of the freedom of expression. It is not just like any other commodity. It is a right that is unquantifiable. You cannot quantify it in monetary terms. 
So when you are dealing with that right, it's not that it is a right just for the media. It's for the 29 million people of Ghana to so much to express without any let or hindrance their views on national issues. So that right must be tampered sometimes with certain considerations that don't give you the impression that you are about to, 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 to suffocate people and prevent them from exercising that right. Right. You see, the walking stick has where we hold it. It's very long. Am I lying? Mm. But it has where you hold it. In fact, if you hold it at the wrong place, it becomes an offensive weapon. Assuming without admitting that a mosquito settles on your, on your, this thing, uh, your head, you don't see it. I, I'm with you. I, 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 as a friend, maybe I, I need to uh, 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 Drive the terminate that way. nuisance of the mosquito. Mm -hmm. So instead of doing the right thing, maybe using a palm, I go and take a hammer. <laughs> if I take a hammer, right, to kill the mosquito on your head, am I going to cure the mischief of the mosquito? You see, let, let's, let's, let's look at this in, in this context. There may be a nuisance. To abate that nuisance, you need to use the appropriate method to do it. You're not against the use of so, the law. So I'm saying that, <laughs> look, I'm saying that there are many things in the law. And I'm saying that the NCA and I'm not, they want to do some things to maybe try and sanitize. But I'm saying that even at the initial, the methods that are being used are wrong. Number two, there are, there are, there are even regulations. Look, section 13, go ahead with section 13 of the, 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 mm. the uh, Communications Act. You, you, see, you, uh, you see electronic communication. You see that it, it spells out issues. One, you should give 30-day notice. Two, you should allow the radio station to state the, 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 the facts concerning the matter. In other words, to put, a to put up a defense. Three, that you should encourage the radio station to be compliant. So, so there are steps. I'm not saying that, uh, uh, right, it is not for nothing. The, the, I'm a ranking member on the communication committee. In mm -hmm. fact, we are in the process of sitting down with the MCA as an oversight body. To look at that. To try and look at all these issues mm -hmm. and see how all of us, how the radio stations can be compliant and how MCA can also allow them to continue to work. Alaji, I'm because grateful. we are in an environment where, like it's been said, mm. if you're not careful, it poisons the political uh, 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 environment that you are deliberately going for, for so some uh, 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 poli po politically uh, uh, motivated radio stations when you know their political orientation. Okay. And so let, let's, let's, let's cool down and allow uh, 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 sanity to prevail so that at the end of the day, the radio stations will have uh, a dialogue with the SEA and for the SEA to ensure that they continue to exist. And I like I'm so grateful. Is the MP for Sagnerugu a member of the uh, NDC? Uh, Joseph uh, Kwabna uh, Bonfe Kabila is Acting General Secretary of the CPP. Eric Tum is a member of the... Uh, James, sorry, pardon me. Uh, because, you, because you've been missing, that's why your name is also getting missing from my name. Gentlemen, I'm grateful. Thank you. I'm grateful. Stay with us. We have more coming up on the show. Welcome back and since TV3 New Day is a show to watch every morning. I just need to inform you that one more time I've been nominated for the Ghana Entertainment uh, Awards the US as Male a TV Personality of the Year. Last year I won it, I hold the title, we can't lose it. So go onto the website and make sure you're voting. Later on the show, uh, Prince Bright will be here with us, Bright's sparkles will be in the studio but right now let's turn our attention we told you earlier about some new programs that tv3 is adoring and it's going to make your tv viewing experience spectacular i've been joined this morning by nana kwejo ado is the head of entertainment lifestyle and events here at media general also with me is the legendary ivan kwashiga he is the chief servant at farmhouse the producers of YOLO, you only live once. And also, another Ivan, Edumwa Abrantia. Uh, he is a cast in YOLO. Gentlemen, welcome. Good morning. Good morning. How are we all? Mm. We're blessed We're this morning. Yeah, it's good to be blessed. Great. Chief, good to see you one more time. Good to see you. And too. keep up the good work. Sweet work. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> Let, let's start off. So, Ken, what new programs are we delighting our viewers with this time around? Well, Johnny, um, like I always come here and I talk about good things. I mean, it's just right that this morning we are here to talk about what TV3 is bringing again out of the stables. Um, we 
We have had great programs in the past, and we still continue to churn out good programs. And so come this Saturday, we are churning out three new programs on the network. We are talking about YOLO Season 2. Mm -hmm. We are talking season about... Five. Se season five. 5. Oh, Season 5. Yeah. Wow, mm -hmm. I missed out on that. <laughs> so YOLO Season 5. And then Kids Say the Dandest Things mm. as well is coming up. And then Yellow Pepper is also showing this or premiering this Saturday. Okay. So g g give me a brief background. Yellow Pepper. Mm. Uh, is it the Ojeng Mashito that we know? <laughs> <laughs> well, pepper is something that we use for food. And mm. so when you talk about food, we talk about um, kitchen. Right. And so uh, this particular program is a drama, a 13-week drama series about intrigue and all of that. It's thought-provoking, exciting, and has some humor in there as well. Um, lead actress um, is Anita Esking on there so what we are talking about is women balancing their personal aspirations mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with i mean home and lifestyle what they're doing is that we are looking at uh, women who are trying to balance all of that providing nutritious and healthy food for the family mm -hmm. whilst balancing with their personal aspirations okay. so we have you know working women who are working a lot lately mm -hmm. you know finding you know making ends meet for family at the same time uh, trying to balance meals for the home. I see. You see, so it's so it's like a trend that's happening okay. that's been dramatized mm. into, into this particular the, the corporate woman and how the she can manage woman. And what you see on your screen are snippets of uh, Yellow Pepper. Exactly. And Anita S. King is on there. Exactly. So you can see swampshirts. So, so it's five women. Five it's women. a story about five, five women okay. who are actually balancing uh, their life, family lives, you know, to also make sure that they are achieving their corporate aims. Mm. And goals as well. YOLO season five, you only live what? once. Mm -hmm. <laughs> After that, uh, mm -hmm. you're on your own. Mm -hmm. Chief, congratulations one Thank more you. time. Thank YOLO you. is a very superb <laughs> concept, mm -hmm. remarkable indeed. We've mm -hmm. traveled through five seasons. Mm -hmm. What are we to expect in this fifth yeah. season? Well, the, the, you know, the issue that we deal with adolescent reproductive health is still with us mm -hmm. and uh, so young people are always confronted with these issues uh, wanting to belong mm -hmm. to the, the, the group the, the age group and also to, to function within that group mm -hmm. is something that uh, uh, they, they, they find quite challenging so mm -hmm. we're dealing with that uh, we have t uh, peer pressure we have um, uh, we're still dealing with malaria, mm -hmm. we're dealing with uh, personal hygiene yeah. and those things uh, that we have dealt with before. Uh, the thing is that this uh, season's uh, episode five, mm -hmm. uh, season five, uh, moves into the body house. But okay. it also has the, the, the old okay. story still okay. going on okay. with Drogba, Abrantia, George, all of them still going on. I but see. we also have some new young people mm -hmm. who are coming into... To, to bring some spice I to it and make it even more interesting. Hey, Dumwa, mm -hmm. you, you are here. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, number five, Yolo number five. <laughs> yeah. How does it feel to be part of such a, a great concept that's impacting lives in many different ways? Um, you know, it's always pretty tough to talk about something that is, was a new experience that has had such an impact in your life. Okay. Um, but then it's, it's amazing. First of all, it's it's, it, you also feel like you have left a legacy behind because it's not something that is just there for entertainment, mm -hmm. but it's something that is teaching people how to do things the right way. Okay. And, I mean, it's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> what role are you playing in there? I play a role of a brandier. A brandier? Um, yes. Are you a bad boy? No. <laughs> not really. <laughs> Who is a brandier in Yolo? Uh, so a brandier is the owner of a barber shop. So the barber shop is basically the place where most of the boys come to hang out and okay. exchange information and basically cool off. Mm. It's a hangout spot for all the boys. So mm. lots of things happen in the barbering shop. Nebantia is a barber, he owns the barbering shop too. Mm. What, what does YOLO expect to achieve? I mean, the seasons will come and go, but what do you expect to achieve overall? Well, you know, YOLO generally, it's about um, uh, entertainment. We're, we're using the, the, the concept of educating people through entertainment, mm. the young people through entertainment. So when you watch the episode, each episode ends with a, uh, uh, some questions mm. that would be supposed to help spice up mm. uh, uh, the discussions that uh, are going to come out of the issues that we would have uh, uh, dealt with okay. in that episode. Mm. So we're expecting that the young people are supposed to learn mm. uh, from 
the, the issues that we'll be bringing up. Mm. They're supposed to pick up the messages that we drop in. Okay. We make sure that we spice those messages with the entertainment bit so it's not like over the top mm. and in your face. Okay. But we expect them to learn. And then the other thing too that we do is that we have a very vibrant um, uh, um, Facebook and uh, social media uh, presence. Right. So the young people are supposed to engage us in on those uh, platforms. Mm -hmm. uh, we're also hoping to come out with a radio uh, uh, discussion program okay. that is supposed to also get more uh, traction and mm. also to get these young people mm. discussing the issues uh, uh, more mm. with themselves and also with their parents and also uh, people that are older than them that know uh, the right things to do I see. and also be able to up, uh, take up um, the, the, the health facilities that are available to them like the health corners in the the hospitals mm. around the country mm. Mm. Uh, that I that deals with issues relating young people mm. and that they have people who are trained who can uh, uh, really in confidence engage these young people if they have issues relating uh, 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 tra sexually transmitted infections mm. and mm. stuff like that mm. so these are things uh, uh, that we expect them to pick really from, really, from, really from, packed from, if you from, ask yeah. me Ivan how do you handle the pressure from from town, they see you on the screens. <laughs> perfect art mm. direction, mm. nice storyline. Yeah. Fine boy, <laughs> see you out there. You're trying to preach a certain message, and yes. you get pressure. Ivan, Ivan, <laughs> <laughs> Ivan, Ivan, Ivan Senior Ivan, and Junior. Ivan, <laughs> no, I'm talking, I'm talking to Junior <laughs> Ivan. Senior Ivan has seen so much pressure. He's used to it. He's used to How it. are you? Yeah. Uh, I think it forces you to grow up. Basically, it forces you to grow up in such a short time because before nobody really knows you and then because of YOLO and then the chance that Ivan gave us to star on the show, mm -hmm. now everybody knows you. And because the message that you're preaching, now everybody expects something from you, expects some reaction from you mm -hmm. when some things happen. Right. So um, it's something that really forces you to grow up, to mature really, really quickly, to mm -hmm. take responsibility of some things that probably you might not have taken as early as you should have. I see. You understand? So yeah. I see. Let's turn our attention now to kids say the darndest things. Right. The, the children have a lot of wits mm. in, in the promo I saw. They That's have right. a lot of wits. <laughs> you know, as teaching time saves nine and she fires back. That's right. When are we seeing that? What's the, what's the reason behind that as well? Well, I mean, we also have, you know, for the past nine to ten years, we've had talented kids on TV3. Absolutely. And so, of course, we, are, we have something for the children every time on our screens. So Monday to Friday, we have something on screen around 4 p.m. and then Talented Kids is on Sunday seasonally. But this time, on the Saturday evening block at 5.30, uh, we're presenting Kids Say. Now, okay. Kids Say has a host and then a number of kids lined up and they are expressing their thoughts, okay. their opinions, and whatever they think mm. about a particular subject area. It could be government, family, politics, current okay. affairs, social, anything at all. Mm. So there is a host who is engaging these kids okay. with a studio audience and the kids will express themselves how they understand whatever right. the host is asking them. So that is exactly what you're seeing on your screen Unhindered. right now. <laughs> Unhindered. Unhindered. <laughs> Unadulterated. <laughs> Raw. You okay. know, and, and that's it. That's the excitement and the humor that we are trying to bring mm. out. And also education again for the kids. And at the end of the day, they are going to learn something out of whatever is being discussed. So Let, let's talk about the times mm. uh, that will put these shows Beautiful. on. The so air. it's it's a block on Saturday actually. So we are talking about kids say that's coming up at five thirty p.m. Okay. on Saturday, then followed by Yellow Pepper at six p.m. Mm -hmm. and then followed by Yellow at six thirty p.m. I see. Wow. So Pat. when so when you sit behind your TV. Um, you are not getting up. Non-stop action. You are, you are not getting up. And, you, know. you better get some popcorn because it's going to be exciting. Yeah. I, I, Ivan, how do you grab the cast to, to come on to YOLO? Because year after year, we've seen an improvement of the cast, mm -hmm. the quality, yeah. and the expertise with which they deliver. Most of them are first timers, mm -hmm. but you're able to sharpen and hone them to yeah. to come out as professionals. How do you do the magic? Well, well, first of all, we do a very wide search for these people and uh, for a, a character 
we could look at uh, over 50 to 100 people uh, for maybe a branches uh, character. We okay. could be looking for loads and loads of people. So our auditions are ongoing every, almost every day, mm -hmm. looking for these people. And then when we find them, sometimes we keep them till the opportunity arrives, and okay. then we, we give them the, the chance to act in, yeah. in YOLO. But then also we, we, we try as much as possible to work with people within their comfort zone. Mm -hmm. So we, I do extensive interviews with these people to make sure that uh, I, I place them within their own life experience so that uh, being first time actors, I do not challenge them so much that, the, so I hide their faults, okay. more or less. I, I, see. I try as much as possible mm -hmm. to, to make sure that I don't expose you. Mm. So where you are not, you may not be that good, I would work with you and right. engage with you and make sure that I, I bring out the best I can from you. We say when there's a Kwashiga on set, you're <laughs> safe. <and secure. laughs> Let's pick your closing thoughts, Abrantia. What do you have to say? 30 mm. seconds for you. And mm. Ken will take over from that. Okay, so Yoli is an amazing mm. show. It's coming to teach a lot. Um, just like Evan said earlier, we just hope that in imbibing the whole lesson with entertainment that everybody gets to absorb it as much and then we can change as many 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 lives as possible i see in the positive direction that right <laughs> the positive direction can you have the final word definitely of course i mean like we're saying tv3 always first in news best in entertainment we stand for entertainment and when i come i talk entertainment mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. once again saturday 5 30 p.m we have kids say mm. for all the kids and even adults as well for the right. humor and excitement mm. in it and then at five at 6 p.m mm. we have yellow pepper drama again with humor and intrigue and all of that and then 6 30 p.m we have yolo season five coming mm. up so you don't have anywhere to go on saturday make sure you are glued by tv3 of course first in news best in entertainment don't waste your saturdays make it exciting because it's been spiced and spruced up for your entertainment and relaxation only your tv3 thank you nanako joado is head of entertainment lifestyle and events at media general ivan Edumwa is playing a brand here yeah. in Yolo season five. You can't miss him, fine boy, no, they pay. <laughs> and, uh, the chief servant at uh, the farmhouse, also a lecturer and, and a man of many parts, Ivan Kwashiga, thank you very much for coming, gentlemen. Thank we'll you. see you on the other side. But coming up, there's Prince Bright. You've missed him. We will tease out some information from him after this break. Uh, back in the day, if you were born around the 90s, uh, early 2000s, and running on till this period, you would have heard him sing. He has uh, a voice that's soothing, that's piercing, that's sharp, that will make you relax, think, and turn. Whoa, who's that guy? He is Prince Bright and is in the studio with me. Chief. Sir, good to see you one more time. Likewise, my king. Likewise. Nice, <laughs> nice shirt you got there. Nice tie you got. <laughs> <laughs> I borrowed mine. So. <laughs> How have you been? I've been blessed. I feel great being here. Mm. I see. You, I see you're doing some fine job out there. Uh, the new banga is, is a hit already right. for many people. Downloads are ongoing and all of right. that. Right. Have you fully recovered from your brother's demise? I don't think I have fully recovered because everywhere we go, there's traces of Ronnie all around. As long as bookback songs are being played on radio, I don't think I'll get over it. Mm. You know, because um, it, it, it always brings back memories. Mm. So mm. I don't think I really, I fully recovered from that. I see. Yeah. How's the industry treating you? I mean, I was just discussing with Kawawa that look, bookback was huge. Uh, National Theatre, Kida Fest, Fan World, right. tickets are sold out two days before the show. Is that the same feeling? It's 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 a different feeling now that we have so much to give and so much to do. Um, there's a lot of us now, mm -hmm. as compared to back in the day when there was only a few. Mm -hmm. So um, it's pretty competitive, but. Um, I'm grateful for the love and support that I'm getting from everybody that we started with to date, mm. and I'm so grateful for that. I see. The voice. <laughs> Amazing. And it became a shiny example for the likes of Castro, right. many others to right. follow after right. Kwame Eugene and everybody, all your children who have come after you. Right. I love that. But My you children. Have, yes, of course, because <laughs> you started it. But you have not lost the voice. What's yeah. the trick? I think it's God's blessing, you know, uh, I have always had it at the back of my head that if God asks me what I did with my voice, what would I 
show, mm -hmm. you know. So um, I give God um, all the praise, all the glory for the talent he's vested in me. And um, I'm trying to keep it as long as I can mm -hmm. to, you know, help others. You know, I, we've always had it um, at the back of our minds to so support the up and coming ones okay. like we did for my children, as you right, said, right. you know. So um, I am here to actually continue with that legacy that we, we built from the past. What do you say to those who think that you should be a, you'll be a good praise and worship singer in church? Sir. I would love that. So, so you should jump into that already. Everything is possible. Are you thinking of it? I have thought about it so many times. What's keeping you from doing it? I am, I think I'm, I'm trying to cr get better with time. Let's see. Exactly. Let's see. How much time are we looking at? A little bit. You know, I sing in church once in a while. Okay. You know, yeah, Zeta here Mission Church. I see. You know, so. Give, give get us a there. style of what you sing. One of the songs you like to sing in church. Oh. <laughs> See, now I'm lost. <laughs> but, you can't um, be lost. Let's see. I see Danny na yewu di Jesus. Buten ti nyami. Aye yi. Ni na yewu di o Jesus. Yes. So you know I still got it. <laughs> you got it. You got it. Let's talk about the new one. The brand new one. Yes. What inspired it? Um, Come to Daddy. Um, actually coded I was talking to coded coded said you always come up with love songs why are you so connected with those kind of vibes mm -hmm. it makes me feel like I feel happy in my heart singing love songs so I sat down one day and said okay mm -hmm. why not do something for people who are getting married people mm -hmm. who are ready to tie the knots right, and you right. know um, be myself as books back, so mm -hmm. create that little humor in there, you know, and also try to depict the sequence by which, you know, you propose, you get the ring, you mm -hmm. want to stay together mm -hmm. for life, mm -hmm. you know, so I stayed with it, that theme to come up with Come to Daddy. I see. You know, so, um, and I think the new term now is uh, Zaddy. Zaddy. Shout out to Captain <laughs> Planet. So, you know, um, yeah, Come to Daddy is an amazing piece. Mm -hmm. I really had fun recording it. Mm -hmm. And um, I thank Best of All World for giving me the opportunity I to see. do it. I see. Congratulations one thank more time you, to thank you. Thank you. I'm Forex 4 comes to mind immediately because you yeah. unearthed their talent. You give them the red carpet and the stage to walk right. on. Right. You have observed them from afar. Mm -hmm. they, don't, they don't look together anymore. Right. What do you think? I think they're morphing into amazing men, if I put it. You know, we started as young boys, mm. and now maturity sets in. People have different things to attend to. So I will say, give folks for a time to actually build themselves as individual brands. Okay. I am pretty sure along the line, I wouldn't be surprised to have them on my upcoming album. Mm -hmm, so just mm -hmm, watch out mm -hmm. for that. But as father, have you called them to the table? We're, we're, have dinner and talk to them, made my voice. We've Behave. tried to get it together, truthfully, mm. but um, I'm trying to be very sensitive about it okay. so as to make sure I have all the not, nuts, you know, tied together. I see. So everything works out perfect. Watch for you. It may be one time, but sweet for you, sweet for you. Deep, deep lyrics you got there. Hey, my buddy. We deep did. lyrics you got in there. We did. I see. But but you make the girl language sound very romantic and soothing. Ghana, it's the most beautiful language in Ghana, if you ask me. Um, tree is beautiful too, as long as the other ones. But maybe I understand Ghana more, okay. or I have a Ghana background. Okay. You know, so um, shout out to Atupai Wekue. You know, yeah, Gamami, you already know. Atupai Bai, Abai Atupai. Oh, na 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 na. Atupai. Eh eh, Atupai. So we hold the rifles in our mouth and fire them. But you're talking about. 
connecting with the lady and making her marry you and talk about mm -hmm. even if you have been cursed, right. her love has shielded you and all of that. Right. Deep lyrics you have there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What, what inspired you to write that song? Were you in love? I, I have always been in love. <laughs> I love being in love. You know, I, I catch myself. I find myself in trouble here and there trying to find love. Mm -hmm. But you know, in the process, it's I've gained the experience mm -hmm. to give and take. So I think um, this really came from the heart. And mm -hmm. I, I enjoyed every mm -hmm. bit of the process. Um, getting this um, song together from the video to the lady. That's a pretty girl right there. I see, very good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm grateful to be able to, you know, play with words and come up with this amazing masterpiece. Are you back to stay? I am I'm across the board. Okay. I am spending more time here in Ghana mm -hmm. because this is where the business the is. People want to see you on their stage. Exactly. And you're globe trotting. I they are actually, not happy. I know, but the thing is, sometimes there's shows here, there's recordings here, mm -hmm. and um, the theme behind my comeback is trying to get the best of all worlds. That's okay. the that's the um, name of my um, mm -hmm. my my um, team that's supporting me. Best right. of all worlds. Mm -hmm. So that's the whole idea to actually pick from all over the world and come up with the best. So I'll be doing a lot of things here in Ghana because you know I'm I'm here mm -hmm. now. So. Um, we're not going to be spending too much time out there. I we'll see. be here You'll more. You'll be here. Often. The VGMAs are coming up this weekend. Who's yes. your pick for Artist of the Year? Ooh. Stoneboy, Shatawale, uh, uh, Sako Dier, mm. Kwame Eugene Kim Promise. Who are you picking? I love all these guys to death. But who are you picking? Are you picking your dreadlock brothers? Or you know, you? Samin is a general. I, I believe he deserves the... Um, a tease of the deck at all, okay. right, if you ask okay. me, you mm -hmm. know, because he's been there, he's been a general for a minute. Right. Sakuri has been killing it, uh -huh, you know, uh -huh. and, and my son, Stone Boy, Jesus, <laughs> and the big man himself, Shata, <laughs> Kwame Yuji and Kitty. Yeah. These guys are dangerous guys, uh -huh. man. Yeah, it's it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. Yeah, but you, you don't know, have a pick yet? Nah, I don't think so. Yeah, but. Okay. If I was to just push it up, I'll say Samini. Samini should I'll, pick I'll it. just say Okay, Samini. we hear you. We'll, we'll, we'll do a little dance, but happy birthday, a big one to you, Selom Amenya. Uh, you should tune in to listen to him at 3 p.m. on Saturday on New FM 95.1. He's worked with a TV3 newsroom as well as a court correspondent. It's your birthday today, brother. Happy birthday. If it's yours as well, happy birthday to you. This is from our group CEO, Beatrice Ejiman, and all of us here at TV3. We love you, Selom. Live long and stay strong. That's all how the cookie crumbles. Tomorrow is going to be exciting. Remember, we're going out to the uh, Teshi Kibla or car park for Community Connect. And then in Kumasi, we'll be launching the Startup Fair and Funding Summit. You can't miss it. So Accra Kumasi is going to be blazing hot. But right now, we're hanging out with Daddy. <laughs> let's, let's, let's push out the sound. I know that if you can think it and your heart can believe it, you can achieve it. Oh, okay. I want to learn a new dance, dance level. Yeah.